Hello guys, welcome to a beautiful afternoon here in Sydney. Today I'm going to take you over this lovely machine here. This is the Ducati Scrambler full throttle version. The Scrambler's been around for a couple of years now, multiple different versions, and it's very popular with... Um, now I'm going to get through this whole review without using the H word. I think you know which H word I'm talking about. Um, yeah, it's been heavily stylized this bike, and um, you know they've promoted it very heavily with all like all the accessories that you can get for it and all that sort of thing. But from the reviews I've read, it's also a quality riding machine. So what I want to do is um, get on, tell you a little bit about the Scramble platform in general, and then what makes a full throttle a full throttle. And yeah, let's see if it's um, if it's as good as the motoring journos say it is. Let's go. All right, folks. Let's have a chat about the uh, Ducati Scrambler full throttle. Uh, before I do though, I want to give a massive shout out to the folks at Sydney City Motorcycles. Now, if you didn't see my last review on the Kawasaki Z650, I'm very pleased to announce that I've got a partnership with Sydney City Motorcycles to bring you these reviews. I'm not being paid by them. It's just a mutually beneficial relationship where I bring bikes to you, and if you live in Sydney and you're interested in the bikes I'm looking at, I encourage you to go and have a chat to the guys at the Sydney City team and see if they can help you out. School zone and double demerit points, so uh, not a good time to be exceeding the speed limit. So if you're into your motorcycles, you have probably heard something about the scrambler phenomenon over the last couple of years. And I'm not just talking about Ducati either. You've been, BMW's got one, Triumph's got one. I'm sure there are others that I've forgotten, but yeah, people are nuts for the scramblers at the moment. And the idea with Ducati's scrambler lineup is they've built a pretty standard platform underneath. And I think at last count, there's about seven versions of it. That was a little too close for comfort. Yes, so at last count, there's about seven different versions of this bike. You've got the Icon, the Classic, the Urban Enduro, which I've heard rumours they're discontinuing. This one, the Full Throttle, they were the initial four that they brought out. Since then, they've also brought out the Learner version, the 62, which I did a review of last year, so have a look there if you're interested. And in recent months, they've expanded the lineup to include a Cafe Racer, and another model they call the Desert Sled, which I'm told has been modified for kind of like lightweight adventure use, if that makes sense. So there's basically a scrambler for everybody now. All right, let's see how the acceleration goes. Uh, pretty good. So the bike has an 803cc air-cooled L-twin. I believe they've borrowed it from the old Monster 796. That's where they started with this. 803ccs in this format makes 75 horsepower and something like uh, 50 foot-pound of torque. And while we're on the subject of the engine, I'll splice in a clip here so you can get a feel for what it sounds like. So it sounds pretty good, huh? As you probably saw in the video, this one has the Termignoni exhaust pipe as factory standard fitting. And that's part of what makes this the, uh, the full throttle model. You get that Termi exhaust. On top of that, I believe these bars are actually flatter than some of the other models as well. You get the lovely yellow and black color scheme 
which um, I'll splice in a couple of little close-ups of so that you can see. It's very nice. You got like a you got like a black suede seat, and then it's got like yellow stitched highlights on it. Looks very stylish. That's one thing I'll say about this bike straight off the bat. It's very easy on the eyes. I think of all the models, this one, in my humble opinion, with the simple black and yellow, the black painted wheels, I think this is the coolest looking one of the lot. But horses for courses, right? Like I was saying, some people are going to prefer the kind of classic styling, which is they'll probably like the Icon model. If you want like a neutral base to um, do your own customizing on, you're probably going to be interested in the Icon model. Yeah, have a look around, see what you think. Some other things to point about from a um, general ergonomics perspective. This thing's got a very low seat. It's like 790 mils, I believe. So that's going to be good if you're a bit shorter or you're new to riding and you're not super confident with your feet yet. 790 mils means you'll be able to get your feet on the ground nice and easily with this thing. Other ergonomics, well the bars are in a nice comfy spot. I've got a straight back, I've got relaxed shoulders, so it's a nice riding position for general comfort. And the good thing about the layout is it's got a nice long tank here and where the pegs are situated, my knees are slightly bent, but I'm very tall and um, I would describe it as quite a comfortable seating position. I think most people are going to be able to get comfortable on this bike, which is a big tick. So I guess the next question, what, is it, what does it actually mean to be a scrambler, you know? I think if you look at Ducati's marketing material, what they're envisioning is people that don't take their riding too seriously, they want to get around town with their bike, commute on it without too much stress, but then also be able to take it out of town on the weekends and you'll notice it's got these uh, kind of groove tires on it that look a bit off-roady the point of that being that you can you know take them on a fire trail or something like that and if the tarmac turns to dirt you don't immediately freak out you know it doesn't mean you have to turn around and go home straight away just quickly I brought my last bike here because I think this is a good little spot to test out if the bike can U-turn without too much trouble so just to like lock the bars around rear brake feed it a little bit of gas really good I think bikes with nice high handlebars like this that give you good leverage and good clearance for your elbows they're always going to be a lot easier to turn around in those tight situations so there's another tick for being able to use it comfortably in urban traffic. So yeah, back to scrambling. I think the idea, in short, is that it's a versatile bike. You know, you can ride it around the city, take it somewhere on the weekends. In order to help you with that, Ducati gives you a larger front wheel on these bikes. So a typical sports bike or standard bike configuration is 17 inches front and back, 17 inch diameter. This bike has an 18 inch front wheel. And the idea there is just to help a little bit more in those off-road scenarios, make it a bit more compliant over potholes and that sort of thing. So I've had a chat about the engine. I, I like the engine. It makes a cool fruity kind of L-twin noise and the, um, the termy pipes definitely help increase the volume a little bit. The other aspect of it is the, uh, the drivetrain, I guess. And what I'm noticing here is it's quite I don't know if chunky is the word, but it, it feels really solid, like, like, like when I change the gear then, it, it really feels in, you know what I mean? It's, um, it's a very, very solid piece of kit. You can probably see just ahead of me here, the instrument binnacle is fairly simplistic. I've got speed in the middle, a taco that goes around the outside. Uh, I can cycle them through the menu here with some other buttons, got ambient air temperature, mileage, those sort of things. But I like it. In keeping with the simplistic nature of the bike, you've got a simplistic dash, right? I think the biggest thing that this bike's got going for it at the moment, in my opinion, is how nimble it is. Like, it feels like it weighs about 50 kilos, this bike. It's incredible. 
it's um, I think it's a combination of the low seat height and the low center of gravity, um, the big leverage from these high handlebars, and probably the lack of actual weight. It's um, very maneuverable. And we've seen already that it U-turns quite easily. So I think in terms of traffic slayer, you know, commuter during the week, you're going to have a lot of fun on this thing. Well, here we go. We've got a bit of an on-ramp here. So let's have another crack at the acceleration on this thing. Very good. All right, so if you're overtaking in a 60 zone, I'm in second gear. Look at that. Incredibly easy. So in terms of a, um, well, I'm seeing all the weird drivers today. So yeah, in terms of a easy to use city bike that's got style about it, I think it's ticking a lot of boxes here at the moment. Uh, this word gets done to death. But this is a talky little engine. It's really good. And again, it works brilliantly for the brief as a town bike. There's been a couple of times in the last 10 minutes where I've seen a gap or I've needed a bit of oomph off the line and there's no dilly-dallying with gears. You just squeeze the throttle and you get urgency, which is always nice. So, what, what's the alternative? What, what, what else should you be looking at if you're looking at a Ducati Scrambler? So, BMW Scrambler is way more expensive and in a different category, I think. Triumph Scrambler, I can't comment on, but I think that's going to be something you're going to want to consider. My understanding, though, is, is that it's heavier and doesn't make as much power. So, I think if you're genuinely looking at this, I, I think you should be looking at things like the MT-07, and probably that Kawasaki Z650 that I test rode last week. So they're different in the sense that, you know, they don't have the same style and cachet as this thing probably does. But in terms of like power output, size, weight, ease of use in traffic, I think those are actually a, a pretty serious alternative to this. But would I recommend the Scrambler full throttle? Yeah, absolutely. I think this definitely has a place in the motorcycle market. And um, a lot of the journos have been keen to point out as well that if this gets more people into motorcycling, then that's a good thing, right? Like if Ducati is able to put on the table a stylish bike that's got good actual performance and can be used in a variety of situations, well, that's a winner in my book. That is a definite winner. And now that they're starting to get a bit more focused with them, like the Cafe Racer and the Desert Sled actually have like some pretty significant changes to them. So now that they're actually starting to focus the Scrambler a little bit more, I think, um, I think all sorts of people are gonna be interested in this bike. So on that note, I might, um, I might say farewell here in rush hour and um, talk to you guys again soon. But before I do, Again, a massive thank you to Sydney City Motorcycles. <laughs> thank you so much, guys, for giving me the opportunity to ride the bikes. And as I said at the top of the video, if you live in Sydney and you're looking for a bike, go pay the blokes a visit and see if they can help you out. They've got three stores across Sydney and lots of nice bikes. And if you want to see more test rides, let the guys at Sydney City know that you're watching and that you enjoyed the video, give it a like, ask me a question in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer it for you. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.